Thomas Claire Binger, as you may know, is the uh, hot shot attorney out of Wisconsin that is persecuting Kyle Rittenhouse. No, you didn't misunderstand me. I didn't say prosecute. I said persecute, and I meant it. And he's become the butt of so many jokes on my channel, I decided why not create a whole new series just for him. And so in these finger boneheaded moments, we're going to isolate something stupid he's really done, and we're going to rate him on a finger scale. The B-I-N part of finger stands for brainless, ignorance, and nastiness. First up, the Guy Smith persecution. Oh, this is a good one. This is where Binger shows just how stupid he really can be. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brainwaves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Now uh, you've been staring at the people on there wondering, who are they? Well, you know, on the one on the bottom right. Uh, the, on the upper left, you see a guy who looks like a, a good dude, a really cool dude, right? And he is. He's a truck driver, hardworking man. He gets in his truck and he drives all over the country bringing produce and bringing good things to you, you know, staying up late, working hard. Oh, just the kind of person that Thomas Claire Binger hates. And, of course, the one on the bottom right is Thomas Claire Binger, the weasel. And so, what is it about Guy Smith that caused Thomas Claire Binger so much trouble? Well, let me explain the story to you. Now, I covered this in a previous video, but I thought I would kind of just tell the story this time and bask in Binger's ridiculousness, okay? So, let me explain what happened here. Guy Smith, he's a truck driver, and he's driving around in his truck, and there's been a lot of break-ins. A lot of truck drivers have been beaten, and he decides, Hey, man, I need to keep a gun in the cab of my truck, right? And so he does. And then he goes through a way station, and they spot it. They go, oh, oh my gosh, there's a gun <laughs> there on the seat of the of the uh, truck. Oh, my, we got to do something about this. So they call the cops, like the little bitches they are, and the cops come, and they arrest Guy Smith. And for what? Not having a concealed carry permit. And, of course, Thomas Claire Binger is going to be all over this. There's no bigger anti-gun person in Wisconsin than Thomas Claire Binger, okay? And so he's, he's all licking lips. All right, I could take a hard-working American truck driver and put him behind bars. I can't wait. And, th and he throws everything he has at Guy Smith. However, Guy Smith has an organization called Wisconsin Carry that decided this is bullshit. We're going to defend this dude. So they put the funds to get a lawyer, a guy named John Monroe, out of Georgia. John Monroe knows what he's doing. And um, at that point, things kind of went downhill for Thomas Claire Binger. All right? Now, you might think, okay, so Thomas Claire Binger uh, presses charges, then loses the court case. Happens all the time. But you don't know what happened here. Stay tuned. Okay? So they get the, they get the, uh, the trial going. And John Monroe presents to Thomas Claire Binger the statute in the state of Wisconsin that makes it pretty damn clear to anybody uh, over the age of five that, guess what? Guy Smith can have a gun in, his, in the cab of his pickup truck. Furthermore, they brought up another statute that said that because the truck is sort of like Guy Smith's home and his business, he can also have a gun in the cab. Guess what? Thomas Claire Binger didn't even know these statues existed. They caught him completely by surprise, like the fool he is. He shows up in court, and he's like, well, what do you mean? Uh, I don't know. I'm not aware of these statues, right? So he's staring at them, and anybody looking at them would tell the uh, prosecutor, dude, man, just drop the damn case. You ain't got nothing. It's pretty clear he can have the gun in the cabin of his semi-tractor trailer. There's nothing in Wisconsin law that says he can't. But Thomas Binger is one, anti-gun, anti-self-defense, and not terribly bright. He decides to press on. 
And so he refuses to drop the case. And at some point, he even tells the judge, Judge, I'm going to appeal this if you rule against me. Well, guess who the judge was? Right, Bruce Schroeder, the same judge that's here in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. And now the judge is thinking, well, crap. Um, if he appeals, it's going to chew up a whole bunch of time and money. And he's clearly off his rocker. So what does he do? He does a smart thing. He adjourns the case. He basically tells the lawyers, look, you guys go discuss it, right? And so about a month or two later, Thomas Claire Binger decides, I guess I'd better drop the charges. <laughs> any, now, any of us, any of us would have realized we had to drop the charges almost from the get-go, but not that dangling, right? So he decides, well, I'm going to go ahead and have to drop the charges. And that wouldn't have been so bad, except he didn't bother to tell the other attorney that he was dropping the charges. And so the other attorney who's based out of where? Atlanta flies all the way to Wisconsin to attend the trial, shows up, and Binger turns around and tells them, we've decided to drop the charges. That's really nice, right? Now talk about salty, right? All he had to do was just call the attorney to say, hey, look, we've decided to drop the charges. You guys can stay in Atlanta. Okay, as far as we're concerned, it's done. But he didn't. Okay, so... Thomas Claire Binger got his ass kicked. He had to drop the charges against Guy Smith simply because he never bothered to read the statutes. And after being read the statutes, still couldn't figure them out. So that's the Guy Smith persecution. Poor Thomas Claire Binger. He couldn't put a hard working American behind bars, and it really pissed him off. It pissed him off so much, he had to pull a stunt like that having some poor lawyer drive, uh, fly all the way up to Wisconsin for nothing. Now, let's give this a Binger score, B-I-N. The B stands for what? Brainless. How stupid was Thomas Binger in this case? Well, it wouldn't have been bad if after he had been read the statutes, he would have said, okay, I, okay, I, I may not have known the law, but I should have. But after reading this, I, I understand, yeah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the charges. He didn't. He kept pressing and, in fact, threatened to appeal, which would have had no chance at all. So you have to wonder just how smart this dude really is. And so on the brainless scale, i got to give him a four out of five on this one. That's pretty brainless. Now, what about ignorance? He didn't know about the law that specifically stated that Guy Smith could have a gun in the cab of his vehicle, and he didn't know about the law that said that because this was considered to be a residence and a place of business, that Guy Smith could keep the gun in the cab of his truck. That's pretty bad. Hey, if you're going to go to trial, at least know the laws. It's one thing to not know them off the top of your head, right? I mean, I can't cite to you the laws in my own state, but if I'm going to go and present to a judge, I think I would open up the law books and read them a little. So on the ignorance scale, this also ranks a four out of five. What about nastiness? Well, the whole idea of his zeal to put a hard work in America who meant no harm. Having the gun in the cabin of his truck wasn't meant to hurt anybody. It was meant for self-defense. That much was clear. And so you have a hard work in America trying to defend himself and Binger tried to put him behind, uh, behind bars. Um, that's one thing, but then not telling the lawyer about it just so that he could make the lawyer fly all the way to Atlanta for no real good reason, that's pretty nasty too. And therefore, this gets a four out of five on the nastiness scale. So my Binger score is, well, oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, oh, this is going to be great, you'll love this. One of the things that Binger said during the Guy Smith trial was that if the judge agreed with the defense's interpretation of the law, well, that would wipe out all of our concealed carry laws. The judge turned around and said, no, that's not true. It would only alter the law for carrying a weapon inside a car. So Binger does this all the time. He tries to paint any kind of interpretation of law as eliminating the entire law 
And he's done this with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing too, basically stating that, well, if you allow the hunting exception, that will allow 17 year olds to carry rifles under any conditions. That's not true. And I don't think Judge Bruce Schroeder is buying a word of it. So it's an old trick of his. And I'm glad that Judge Bruce Schroeder is not falling for it. I think the fact that Judge Bruce Schroeder heard this court case before the Kyle Rittenhouse case is only going to help Kyle. He knows what an idiot Thomas Claire Binger is. He knows his tricks. He ain't falling for them. And so I do, I do think that ultimately he will rule in Kyle's favor about the minor possession charge. We'll see. I may be wrong, but I have a feeling that Judge Bruce Schroeder has no respect for Thomas Claire Binger. Like my video and subscribe to my channel.